Jacques Bilhen, the founder of the Gallery Art Marquis, is an Egyptologist and respected dealer specialized in ancient and Egyptian art. To represent his gallery for the Braffa highlights, he has chosen an Egyptian figurine of the Middle Kingdom in blue faience with details in black, representing a naked woman whose legs stop at the knees. Dressed in a Hathor wig, she wears a necklace with a pendant, as well as a simpler one, consisting of a single row of beads, bracelets and arm cuffs, a belt of cowries strung one after the other, and two long necklaces of beads, worn diagonally between the shoulder and the opposite hip, which intersect at the chest and back. Figurines of this type have been traditionally interpreted as concubines of the deceased, placed in the tomb for the benefit of the owner in the afterlife. They were sentenced to stay with him forever as they were unable to move due to the missing legs. Since the studies of Geraldine Pinch and Elizabeth Varaska, our gaze on the generic theme of figurines of nude women has become less simplistic than in the past, because it has been proven that this type of statuette featured in the Middle Empire, not only in a funerary context, but also in sites that were inhabited. These figurines are naked or dressed in fishnet dresses with beads, carrying the Hathor, tripartite or trimmed short hair wig. It emerges from these statuettes a blatant eroticism, almost provocative in its abundance, as it contains all the ingredients of a fantasy of the Egyptian Middle Empire. A totally or subtly perceptible body through dress or beads, with tattoos and carries, as a direct allusion to the female genitalia, and very accentuated large hips and buttocks, pubis and bare breast artistically hidden behind a very thin veil. Some examples among those types with short hair present small holes in the head, possibly for inserting real hair, in order to magically increase the power of the object. It seems certain that these objects were related to sexuality and fertility in general for both man and woman. It also appears that, like so many other aspects of Egyptian civilization, this applies both in the context of everyday life as well as in funerary context. Indeed, these figures were useful for finding fulfillment in the afterlife, as well as magically ensuring regeneration and rebirth of the deceased. Over and beyond an obvious contextual link to Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of love, beauty, music, motherhood and joy, it is worth wondering whether these figurines don't actually represent women directly involved in the worship of the goddess. This hypothesis is comforted by the similarity between the dotted lozenge tattoos seen repeatedly on the thighs of these figurines and those very similar found on the two unnamed mummies of women dating back to the reign of Mentuhotep II, discovered by Winlock in Dar el Bahari in the immediate vicinity of the Hathor Priestess Amunet's mummy, also tattooed. The refined elegance of the modelling, the quality of the earthenware and the perfect state of preservation make this statue one of the best examples in the world for this type of object.